Okay, hello there, and I uh, have been requested to do a tutorial showing how to work Clip Studio Pro uh, for the animation function. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a new canvas, and there's four different options at the top, um, uh, illustration, comic, and show all comic settings and then also animation. Um, what you're going to want is the animation setting. You can see it changes the options available to you based on which one you select. So, and you're going to want to set your canvas to uh, 2048 width and height of 1250 with a resolution of 1200. Um, and the reason those numbers aren't uh, such normal numbers is because apparently it um, renders slightly oddly if you um, do a more traditional uh, size. So, and then here on your frame rate, you're going to want to do 24 frames, uh, and that's how fast it plays back per second. Um, playback time is how many frames, like uh, the length of your uh, can't of your canvas basically of your timeline okay so once you have that set up you just hit OK and you'll create your new canvas so I'm just gonna be talking about the very basic functions this should just be enough to get you uh, started you know uh, so and get you animating so the first thing you want to do is you want to pick whichever pen or pencil you want to use brushes and that's hotkey uh, uh, P for the pencil, pastel, and pen and marker, and you can just choose whichever one you want. Um, the G pen is a very popular one, it has a very smooth edge, and you can see um, you get a lot of sensitivity uh, based on... Uh, based on uh, if you have a pressure sensitive uh, either monitor or tablet. So. Uh, so we're just going to do a really basic uh, thing for one, for a couple of frames so you can see how it works. Uh, so I've just drawn a circle here on frame one. Uh, I'm going to go here and uh, the one little rectangle with the red uh, line around it and the little star asterisk, uh, that's going to be your new frame. So you want to hit that and you can see it's created a new frame here on the timeline. By the way, if your timeline isn't there, don't worry. All you have to do is go up here to window uh, window, and select a uh, timeline from it and it'll show up. And you can just drag that around. Uh, and you can just drag that around to uh, dock wherever it is that you want it to be. I prefer mine below the canvas. Um, so back to uh, the frame. So we've got our second frame here. And you can see you can't see the previous frame now. So what are you going to do? You have to hit the onion skin button, which is right over here, right above the timeline. And you can see that's your previous frame. And you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you can see with the eraser tool, it doesn't erase that because it's not actually on this frame. So we're just going to go over here and draw another circle. Um, so now that we've got our second circle, and you're going to want to make sure you close all of your lines when you're drawing too, because that'll make it a lot easier to color later. Um, and so then let's make one more frame just for the sake of it. Drawing a circle, hardest thing in the world. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've got our three circles, but you're, you're wondering, how can I color? Because, you know, you can't color. I'm using the, the flood fill, which is um, hotkey G. You can't color without getting rid of your lines if you use the same if you use the same layer. So what you have to do is you have to come over back down to your timeline and create a new folder. And that folder is gonna, you can create that by clicking the first uh, little 
paper sheet button. And you can see, uh, you can move the folders around the timeline and arrange them in order of um, vision, uh, however you like. And we're going to call this color. So, and this works the same way that it works when you're doing a regular drawing in terms of the flood fill. So, uh, all you have to do is create that first uh, frame on that new folder. And you can see it's all coming up over here as well. And I'll show you a little bit how to how to use those later and why they're important. Um, so we're going to just, let's make this ball green. So, and then we come over here to our next frame, create a new frame. And again, you don't need to worry about that blue because that's just your onion skin showing you where the previous frame was. Uh, create our third frame and color that green. And you know what, let's just make a blank frame so that, and you do have to make that blank frame uh, for the color as well because if you didn't have that there, you can see the color would still be there um, without a new blank frame to uh, tell it, oh, you don't want to be on that frame anymore. So you can see when we play it, it just uh, scrolls through. That whole that 24 seconds, and let's just move it to here, so we don't. There you go. Have to wait for that. Okay, so that's that's basically how you animate on the timeline here. And um, uh, the only other thing that's really important for knowing how to animate, just the basics, is um, knowing how to manipulate these. Uh, layers properly. So you can see that they're all numbered and they all were all the layers over here were created uh, when you created a new layer over here when you created a new frame over here. So uh, see we're gonna create frame 5 and look frame 5 just showed up over here. Um, and so the important thing about this is that um, <clears throat> say you want to get rid of this frame right here you're going to uh, right click on that and you're going to just change that to nothing and hit enter and you see that frame disappears. Oh, shit. That's not... Why is it not... Damn it. And you can duplicate frames that way as well by um, just changing the number to a previously used frame. So you don't have to have an extra layer. You're just telling it, oh, you know, use this frame again right here. Um, but I could say, oh, fr we just want to duplicate frame 5 and it becomes the same as previously. And you can always just delete that there and say, oh, you know... Uh, I want frame 4 to actually be uh, a duplicate of frame 3, so you just uh, come over to frame 3 and drag it down onto your new la new layer, and it just duplicates it. Um, or you can right-click it. Uh, let's see... You usually can right-click it. Um... Or you can go up to layer and hit new raster layer. So, but you can see um, that that's a, an easy way to you know duplicate a layer and get a new one. But you do have to make sure that you change it to a new frame if you're going to be moving it anywhere, because um, you can't just have that duplicate layer and then move it elsewhere and still call it layer three because that's going to be completely different. Um, okay, so, uh, that is pretty much the basics, and I just made a, um, basic timeline here of an animation of a, um, bouncing ball, you know, the classic, uh, and you've got the animation here on the first folder layer, and, um, you've got the color, 
and then I just drew a little line for the floor and put that on a separate um, folder as well. And so when that plays now, I've got a nice little bouncing ball. Um, yeah, and that's just the basics. So I hope that uh, is enough to get you started. And I'll see you next time.